Hey guys, and welcome to honestly one of the weirdest battles I've cast in quite some time between the mighty warriors Consul of Rome leading his Empire forces up against Bop here and the Vampire Count. So it shall be an old school Total War Warhammer 1 showdown between the living and the dead. And both these builds are pretty damn wild and I absolutely love them. For the Empire, we've gone very limited on the mobility and in fact the range, but gone with a bucket ton of troops to try to implement that damage onto the Vampire Counts, but it is not without some cavalry. On the right hand side we have Knights of the Blazing Sun currently lurking in the trees waiting to spring an ambush, and on the left hand side as well we have the Royal Altdorf Griffite Knights. These guys can uh, do some pretty serious damage, they will rip and tear apart any large creatures or beasties, as well as go toe to toe with Blood Knights and other elite cavalry that the Vampire Counts can bring. Let's give them a, a little neck scratch just to let them know they are by far the coolest Empire unit in the game. We also have a rather interesting Lord pick, someone I've not seen in a very, very long time. It's Carl Franz, and he's on horse, so no big old gigantic bird in the sky, no foot Franz, but we do have horse Franz. Again, a rare sight indeed. He's coming in, dual wielding the Gar Maraz, as well as the Reichland Runefang, and he has Stand Your Ground, and he's going to be hiding, looking to set up an ambush with his cavalry on the left-hand side. So distracting the opponent with this big old blob of a build in the middle. Then hitting them from the flanks with the cavalry. But I think the vampire counts have some skirmish and ambush tactics of their own lined up to their sleeves. For the rest of the build, we have spearmen as well as some of those naked lunatics of Sigma dotted throughout the battle line, including the tattered souls. And then there's a bucket ton of cheap spearmen and so forth. We do have some silver bullets in the central quarter, add a bit more punch to this build. And the rest of the range troops is indeed going to be free company militia, which is quite nice here because often you'll meet fell bats, die wolves, and all those kind of nasty units which can sneak into your back line. Free company militia, though, really won't mind dishing out the damage with their swords as well as their pistols. Leading this ground contingent, we do have two heroes. We have a Bright Wizard with Fireball and Burning Head, very good up against the Undead Forces, although no healing with the Royal Aldorf Griffites can be considered a bit of a risk, and we have a Warrior Priest as well, singing the praises of Sigma coming in with all of his buffs as well as the banner as well. So pretty cool stuff there. I'm actually going to pause the battle because as you can see it's going to get underway rather quickly as there are some sneaky shenanigans afoot from the Vampire Count player. We have the Feasters of the Dusk, regiment around Crypt Ghouls in the back line, supported by some Die Wolves. And over in the trees, it looks like the ambush is going to be sprung on the ambush as we have double Die Wolves, one of which is the Dire Pack, which does come with anti-large and fighting in the trees. They're going to be a big advantage up against the Knights of the Blazing Sun here. Up in the skies, we do have some Felbats as to be expected, but alongside them we have double Vargeist and some more Felbats in the distance as well. But the Vargeist really do bring some nice AP, particularly on the charge. They can be used rather similarly to Hawk Riders without the range. So you just come with those clattering charges into the back of your enemy, break them, and then get out of there and do the same again. Leading the army, we have a Strigoi Vampire Lord up in the sky on his mighty beastie Terrorgeist here. Not going to give him a neck rub as flesh may be pulled apart by my mouse. He comes in with the Ghoul King buff, which is really nice. Opal Amulet as well as Power Stone, Command of the Unliving, Soul Blight and Spirit Leech. A good little toolkit for sure. And the rest of the infantry is going to be Crypt Ghouls dotted all the way along. I know a lot of people don't like Crypt Ghouls, but it looks like this Vampire Camp player is looking for a rush style of approach. And he has some Cane Wraiths as well, a guard in the flanks and a Necromancer down on the ground. Invocation Heck and ready. Dead shall be his poisons of choice. And on this side, it looks like we have even more Cane Wraiths. So, Cane Wraiths and Crypt Ghouls will be the main battle line. So, really interesting Vampire Camp build here. I have not seen anything like this in quite some time, if ever. Just a full on Vampire Camp rush. No zombies, no skeletons, no Grave Guard. None of those staple units you see, Blood Knights. None of that rubbish. We're coming in with some really unique stuff here today. Knights of Blazing Sun have indeed engaged in the forest as we swoop through the trees here. It looks like they were faring relatively well despite being on the back foot by being in the trees, but in comes the Shrugai Vampire Lord and the Vargeist, and you can see the Knights of the Blazing Sun, they do not want to F with these guys, they're going to be falling back, and in fact terror outed here, and could be escorted off by some lowly fell bats there, so not a good start by the Empire. Looks like they're trying to realign their forces here on the high ground, uses trees to kind of protect their back here, but that could be a bit of a mistake with so many units hidden at the moment amongst them. But yeah, just reform the ranks and down here in the ground, it looks like the Feasters of Dusk were trying to sneak in through the forest. They will find themselves more stern competition though. Royal Aldorf Griffites and Karl Franz are going to be a much tougher competition than the Knights of Blazing Sun. It looks like they have managed to notice the Feasters this time and they're going to be the ones getting the drop on the enemy riding through the forest leading his men into action after the feasters 
should be able to dispatch them relatively easily. Silver Bullet getting their eye in as well, doing some pretty good damage to the Vargeist. Followed up with a Fireball as well, and it looks like the Fireball is indeed actually going after the Vargeist, so it completely ignoring the Shogai Vampire Lord. Two of the Beasties go down, Silver Bullet unleashing a salvo of deadly silver into the sky, and Silver Bullet's very thematic, I feel, kind of against vampires and so forth, and they're really laying on the power thick right now. That Vargas unit may even go down if they stay a little bit too close here to the Silver Bullets. Down the forest, it looks like the Dire Pack, as well as some more wolves, have emerged here alongside the Shogai Vampire Lord to try to dispatch Karl Franz. And once again, the Empire Cavalry is fighting predominantly in the trees, which is really bad news for them. Getting hit by a Spirit Leech, but stand your ground, right on Runefang has been popped. And in come some loyal warriors of Sigma, the Spearmen, charging in, being buffed up by the Runefang. And actually, you're going to tear apart the majority of these troops rather comfortably. And yeah, this ambush has gone rather well indeed for the Empire of switching what happened earlier on but cane race are starting to come into the action alongside some crypt ghouls three company militia have been jumped now by a summon of crypt ghouls themselves down in the main fight velbats are trying to kill the silver bullets but there's so much support here from the spearmen it looks like the velbats will go down it's a nice crossfire as well coming in by the free company militia to really just pull apart the velbats it looks like the Vargas trying to do a bit of cycle charging, but wherever they go, they are met by spearmen. They're now popping on top of the free company militia to try to finish them off, but they took so much damage on the approach, they are really starting to struggle here. Warrior Priest is doing a good job in the centre of this build, trying to hold the army together, whilst Karl Franz does his best over on the far flank. But the Royal Out of Griffites are routing, and that's disastrous news because the die pack will certainly be used to escort them off the field. Though the die pack are starting to crumble a little bit, so there may be his chance, uh, a little bit, tiny bit of hope yet, that the Royal Aldos could indeed come back. Karl Franz seems untouched and unfazed, however, as Warrior Priest is trying to uh, hustle over onto this Necromancer. Necromancer, though, simply going to be falling back, and it seems like the Warrior Priest is going to be giving up on that endeavour. We do get a lovely burn of head, seems like we went through the cane wraiths here and catched a few of the other units as well. And the Fire Wizard may be the most important unit left on the battlefield for the Empire at the moment to deal with all those nasty cane wraiths. And it looks like the camp player knows this, coming with a lovely breath attack, doing some massive damage there to the Bright Wizard. Once to probably start cycle charging and swooping down where possible. Looks like we do have a summon once again of Crypt Ghouls to try to surround and drag down that Bright Wizard. But the Emperor, Karl Franz, is nearby. And he's coming in swooping with Garmaraz to save his ally. Killing a Vargeist on the charge, beating back the Crypt Ghouls and inspiring the troops to greater feats of heroism. He may only just be on a horse, but he still punches like he always did. Karl Franz got plenty of fight left in him despite his old age. Could come down after the Shogai Vampire Lord and with the charge it's going to do some pretty heroic damage. You can see the Shogai Vampire Lord wants nothing to do with Foot France or Horse France actually I should say. He's upgraded from Foot France. Foseeker popped, driving away the Vampire Lord who does have Opal Amulet. Well popped there, good time by the Vampire Camp player to keep him alive. And he is really going after that Bright Wizard. But you can see Consul of Rome is dragging, trying his best to pull the Vampire Count units into Karl Franz when they go after the Bright Wizard. Taking pretty big damage now as Franz continues to chase it. War Priest is holding it down in the middle. Shield of Faith has gone down, keeping the Spearman in the fight just about here. And it looks like we are going to get yet another burn in the head, aiming at the Cane Race, which I think is a really good target priority. He needs to get rid of them, otherwise that Terror is going to force off all the Spearmen, and then Karl Franz will be fighting alone. Struggle Vampire Lord is still trying his best to hunt down the Bright Wizard, but somehow, due to a really good micro by the Empire player, the Bright Wizard is still alive, although another summon has gone down here, but this time it is Mega Zombies looking to drag down their opponents, but the Bright Wizard gets caught napping a tiny bit there. No damage taken though, 1,700 HP. Did get stuttered a few times, but has managed to escape once more to relative freedom. But there are fell bats now who could be used to pin in the Lord there, or the hero I should say. Balance Power though is dead even at the moment. Just look at this micro falling around in all different directions. A big breath attack does come down on the Spearman, trying to get rid of them. But Hammer of Sigma has been popped, and the ground forces for the Vampire Counts are being dispatched here. Karl Franz is a happy bunny indeed at the moment. Up to 35 kills. Just roaming through the enemies. Sponking them on the head there with his hammer. I really need to get the bonk sound so I can bring it into games when Karl Franz hits people with his mighty hammer. Bright Wizard still trying his best to escape. Looks like some uh, brave men of Sigma are putting their lives on the line here to at least hold back the enemy. Though the Shogai Vampire Lord will be uh, flinging some of them up in the air and whipping them back and forth. 
and uh, that's not going to go too well for them whatsoever. Vampire Lord only up to 38 kills so far, but still done a good job hunting down the enemy. No better head does come in. Looks like it manages to finish off the remainder of the cane race, which is certainly good news. A fireball does come up, smacking that strong Vampire Lord, who's coming to try to assassinate the Franz Meister himself here. But he's supported by his bros, the Warrior Priest, as well as this Firecaster. Should be able to do some decent damage. Fell bats there, taking massive bursts, in fact, from the uh, Warrior Priest. Down here, the Spearmen are starting to lose faith, though, and the balance of power is slowly creeping more and more into the Vampire Count's favour. But I think if Karl Franz can get some good cycle charging done onto the Vampire Lord and counter charges, he could be in a good straight. But this is the problem when you bring a horse and not a gigantic flying mount is you are guaranteed to receive the charge rather than give the charge, particularly if your opponent wants that and uh, goes after France instead of the Bright Wizard, which honestly might be the best play at the moment. Most of the ground forces of the Counts are dealt with already. There's probably not much Winds of Magic left for that Bright Wizard. And Fireballs aren't the super scary spells, at least when you're this healthy. So yeah, coming after France, I think, is the best way to do it to ensure that he cannot counter charge you. And that's just what the Count player is doing at the moment. Following up the charge with a Spirit Leech as well. The ground force is really starting to break though for the Count's forces. But Karl Franz down to below half health. He takes a few massive hits there. He is trying his darndest to fight back against the beast. But it's not going particularly well. Some fell bats are starting to switch around him as well. Distract him. Trying to bog down his hits and take the damage there for their Leech Lord. Franz trying to get in there and finish off the beast to be the hero that the Empire needs. But who shall win the light or the dark? Looks like the Vampire Lord with the Ghoul King popped and Opal Amulet is going to get healed up quite nicely and come in for some more cycle charging. But a fireball swoops in. A very accurate fireball. That Bright Wizard has been really on point today. Another cycle charge comes in in the late game. Though it looks like the War Priest is still nearby. A Spirit Leech follows up. Karl Franz down to just 567 HP. The Bright Wizard. Sword ablaze with holy fire goes toe to toe with the terror guys. Follow me, lads. I've got this. Well, I don't know if you do because Karl Franz has bit the bullet. I think at least I don't see him anywhere. No, he is actually fleeing. Maybe he can come back. It looks like we do have some missile pressure back online in the form of the free company militia. Sadly, it is not the silver bullet. Silver bullets would have been far nicer there. Balance power moving to ever closer to army losses. And it looks like the Vampire Counts will win this one with just the one unit remaining. Though he is pretty healthy, plenty left to give. It is still a very, very, very pyrrhic victory there. Can't believe that came down to one model, but the Shoroi Vampire Lord proven once again why he should be considered a powerful warrior when you are picking your Vampire Count builds. So often I just see the same lords over and over again. Jogai Vampire Lord has, you know, relatively better. You do see him now and again, but nowhere near as much as the, uh, like, Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, for example. And I think the Shoroi Vampire Lord really is uh, maybe not quite as powerful as him, but close. Incredibly close. And you can see, having a good time here. Tattered Souls going to be fighting. Their bodies are indeed tattered. Their souls, though, still intact because they know they shall die for a good cause. And that cause is the Emperor and Sigma. Last little Tattered Soul gets flung to the ground here. And, uh, oh no, he's going to get back up. Okay, what a chat. Getting back up to fight one more time before, uh, unfortunately, biting the bullet at last. Down to just the 50 HP. Man, this Tad Soul is uh, really going quite ham at the moment. Some janky animations coming in by the Soroy Vampire Lord should probably end up sealing the deal here. So, an epic fight between these two guys. I'm uh, trying to, oh my god, down to one HP. Okay, no, he is indeed gone. Sad, sad days for that Tad Soul, but he died doing what he loved best being murdered. A valiant defeat by the Empire forces and a really fantastic game with two pretty ridiculous builds that I didn't expect to see here. So well played to Consul of Rome and Bop. I must admit this Vampire Count player has won my heart with his absolute insane build and really good play as well as Horse Franz dishing out the damage in the name of Sigma up to 66 kills 2,279 damage value is certainly no joke. Uh, particularly because he is far cheaper than of course he would normally be on Deathclaw, and he was given as good as he got with the enemy large monster, but the problem here is he had no healing, and whereas the Ghoul King comes with you know, a few lives really, he's kind of like a cat, he's got so many uh, heals in his uh, back pocket, you can invocation the heck him, but at the same time he comes with his own heals, and uh, he certainly needed them today because he took quite a punishment. 
Well played once again to these two lads. Massive thank you to Console Rome for sending this one in via my Discord. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So we will cover damage dealt and damage value. But before then, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap a big old thumbs up on it. As well as subscribing for more glorious Warhammer content into the future. There are links down below in the description. If you want to submit replays just like Console Rome did, you can. You can do that via my Discord. As well as chill out with a load of cool people there. Submit replays to me. Uh, get involved in events and tournaments to host and all that good stuff. There's also links down below to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Feel free as well to comment down below what you thought of this battle, what you think of Horse Franz and his uh, heroics here today, and what you thought of the builds in general. Also, if you've got nothing to say, feel free to yell quack. I really do appreciate all the support. It's uh, certainly been a good fun caster. But anyway, on to the good stuff. Carl Franz, yeah, absolute raid boss there. 2.2k damage value, 66 kills. Not much more we can say about the heroic emperor of the people here. Warrior Priest came in with 700 damage value, 85 kills. Did a really good job being the anchor for the ground forces. Franz, he was out on the flanks doing his thing, being kind of all Alexander the Great with the cavalry. But you need that stable leadership in the middle. And that's what the Warrior Priest certainly did indeed uh, bring to the battlefield. The... Firecaster did a really good job himself, 2,260 damage value, 31 kills, was pivotal up against this Vampire Count build because he was needed to deal those Cane Wraiths, and again, consistent fireballs, yeah, they're not going to do the most damage, but it will add up over time to try to drag down some of the bigger beasties. The Spearman held, and that was their job here today, not crazy damage value across the board, the best unit, 461 though, not too shabby, the rest of the infantry, I mean, were kind of overshadowed to be honest by the Tattered Souls, 190. 96 kills, 13,000 damage dealt, 1,000 damage value. You guys certainly went out like absolute heroes. I do quite like the pick here of the free company militia because they can dispatch die wolves and fell bats in combat, but still give some long range support. And you can see one unit performing really well here. 829 damage value. The other one suffering though, only 291 silver bullets as did some good damage initially. Some good, good burst damage to get that 400 damage value. But then, you know, where was the rider to protect them? The riders were getting slaughtered in the forest. So only 400 damage value. Not uh, able to protect them, unfortunately, here today. Nice to play the sun. 542 damage value. The Demigriffs 658. So they kind of set up that trap on the flanks. Looking to drag in the slow, ponderous vampire counts onto the battle line so the cavalry could hit them from the flanks but bop had completely different ideas no slow units in his build whatsoever i suppose the necromancer was the slowest but the strugoi vampire lord an absolute raid boss here today 60 kills 3552 damage value 10k damage dealt oh yeah he brought the pain today and managed to seal victory on his own in the end the Crypt Ghouls, I see a lot of people hating Crypt Ghouls, but they did okay today. I mean, 567 damage value is not amazing, but 83 kills managed to drag their way through a lot of the state troops and get into that juicy back line. 835 damage on this unit, which got 139 kills. Really good work by them. Unfortunately, for the Feasters of the Dust, they did get hunted down and assassinated by the cavalry. Cane Raves across the board did, you know, okay, but the main thing they did was absorb a lot of burning heads. 742 and 333 damage values, not the best. Up in the sky as well, the Vargais were countered quite nicely by Consul of Rome. The Doggos, though, did really good. Now, the damage value is not insane on a lot of them, although the Dire Pack got 889. They hopped on top of the cavalry, pinned it in place, and allowed other units to come in and assassinate and win in the mobile game early on. Really helped Bob in the late game, so he could just cycle charge uh, to his heart's content with his Lord there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.